As I've mentioned a couple of times, the Puppet tool set consists of three tools, the Puppet Pin tool, the Overlap tool, and the Starch tool. And in this lesson, we're going to work on the Overlap and the Starch tools. You use the Overlap tool when you want to have some part of an object appear in front of or behind something else, and you use that just to make sure that it goes where you want it to go. And you use the Starch tool to override Newton's third law of physics, you know, the one that says for every action there's an equal opposite reaction. The way the puppet tool works is if you move one part of the object, the other part kind of compensates for that move by going in the opposite direction. So you need to overcome that with the starch tool. So we're going to violate Newton's third law of physics, folks. Let's go to Working Files and go to After Effects Projects and then go down to 1204 Overlap Starch. We've got our little fellow again here with some colorful limbs so you can see that they're overlapping more easily. We're going to start setting some pin points here. Let's go get the pin tool and click on his ankles, we'll say. Click up here in his hips. There you go. Let's take a look at this purple leg here and move it around. Okay, let's go to the left and see what's going on. Now it goes in front of the orange one, kind of by chance. All objects are in the plane of zero, if you want to think of it that way. Negative goes back, positive comes toward you, the Z space. We want to make sure that this purple guy goes behind the orange leg in this particular case. So we need to tell it to do that, and we use the Overlap tool to give it that instruction. So go up here, click this little disclosure triangle, and click on the Puppet Overlap tool. And what that does is it displays the original shape. Now that we've moved a little bit, there's the original shape. We're going to click down here to say this part of this body is the one that we want to control. It doesn't have to be on the X. The X is the original pinpoint there. We're going to click somewhere, let's say, mid-leg there, like that. And that puts this little Overlap tool point there with an extent of 72 and in front 59. Now the default would be like 50 probably, and the extent would be like 150. It just happens to be with the last setting that I used. The in front says how far in front of this object is it. 59% means it's way in front of the default zero here. And the extent shows how long it goes. We need to extend the extent. We want it to go up his leg and down to his toes. So let's drag it up, you can see it there, filling that gap. And that works perfectly, very good. So now we've Define this area with this one overlap tool. And if you go down the mesh here inside the puppet effect, you'll see that we've now added an overlap property group. And inside overlap property group, this is one overlap pin. And it has three properties. The position, that's the location there. How far in front of things it is, relatively speaking. And its extent, relatively speaking. Okay, that's all set up here. And these things are all animatable, all keyframable. All right, let's go down here again. I need to switch back now to the pin tool. Click on this pin tool. Let's see, now he's in front. We want him to be behind. So to go click on this thing again, click on overlap, click on you, and say, we'll just change him to behind. I can go down here to the layer, but I'd rather just work up here. It's easier to do it up here. So I'm going to drag it here left till it's below zero, less than zero. And notice the second we get to less than zero, it turns dark. That's telling you that it's now negative. See how it switches from white to gray? And the farther back you go, the darker it gets. Pretty cool little feature. Right where it gets when you go forward. So we're taking back the little negative value. Now he'll be behind everybody. Let's just check that out. Go back to the pin tool. Let's move him to the left now and see if he goes behind the orange leg. Let's hope he does, right? Oh, good. Behind it he goes. Up, 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 like that. All right, let's try this again with his arm, we'll say. Let's go up here and put some pins up here. Got the pin tool selected. I'm going to go one pin, two pins, three pins. And I want to have this forearm go in front of the biceps. Click on this. Shift click on this. Let's see how that works. Like so. And now I'm going to get rid of this one here and just click on this one right here and pull it in front. And it does, I think, go in front. But I want to make sure it goes in front. So I'm going to have this forearm selected and make it go in front of the bicep. So let's go back to the overlap tool. Notice how it goes back to the original shape. I'm going to put it right about there. That's kind of the center of the tip of his fingers to his elbow, right about there, I think. Now, the extent is pretty big. You can see it's dark, and it's 241. That's the amount that we put on most recently. Let's drop the extent way down. There we go. So it goes up to his forearm a little bit. Let's make it positive. Also help us see it. There we go. So now it's in front. That looks pretty good. Now I want to do the same thing for his biceps. But I don't want it to be more than 24, but I do want it to be more than zero, because I want it to go in front of his body. So I go over here and click again, using the overlap tool right there, on his biceps. And the extent is already pretty much correct, but I don't want it to be 24. I want it to be less than 24, but greater than zero. 
So it goes in front of his body, but behind the forearm. And that's kind of how this whole process works. Let's go back to the pin tool here. Now we're going to move this guy in front of him for sure. And let's take this one. We'll click the two of them. Shift click here. We'll make sure that the biceps go in front of the body by moving it over here. And they do. That's how it works. All right. The fact that he's moving around like that is something we can solve using other pins or using the starch tool. And we're going to work with the starch tool now on a different guy. So I think you get the whole concept here of the overlap tool. Let's switch on down to the next little puppet we got here. Got this little boy walking. So our goal here is to let the little boy wave at us, but not have his head get kind of contorted when he does that. So I'm going to put a pin right there, put a pin out here. And now if I just move his wrist, for example, you know, everything's going to get moving there. There's sort of an example of Newton's third law of physics there at work, kind of an example of it at any rate. So let's overcome that by just putting a pin down here to keep his legs from moving. There we go. Now his head kind of moves as we move that around. I put a pin here in the middle of his head. Let's take a look what happens now. His face kind of gets a little bit twisted as we do this. And that's what I want to overcome with the starch tool. We don't need to have all that stuff going on here. So you go over here to get the starch tool by clicking that little disclosure triangle and clicking on the puppet starch tool. I want to starch up his head a bit. Notice we have the original shape here. I'm going to go right there in the middle of his head there. And it puts a little starch point there. And it takes these last numbers that I used, amount and extent. Extent means how large of an area are we including in our starch tool region. And the amount means how strong a starch is this. If you bring it down a little bit, you see that it gets a lighter color gray. We'll figure out how strong we want to make it in the moment. I'm going to drop it down to, let's say, 12 there for the time being. The extent needs to be a little bit larger. We want to include his face there. Let's pull it down a bit and see if we can include his face without including his shoulder. The run there probably is okay. Let's try this now. Go back to the pin tool. There we go. And click on his wrist again. See how that works. Oh, look at that. Much better. His head's moving just a little bit now. So it's not like contorting him too much. In fact, it looks kind of natural. So that's how you use the starch tool, basically to overcome kind of strange motion when you get close. Like remember how his face kind of got twisted when I pulled over here? Well, now his face is not twisting anymore because of the use of the starch tool. If it was twisting a little bit too much for our purposes, we can go back to the starch tool, click on it to make it active. Click on this guy to say that's the one we're interested in and increase the amount. That'll make them stiffer and stiffer. Notice how it gets darker there. Let's go back to the pin tool now and try that. Move him again. And now he'll be like rock steady. His body moves, but his head is not contorted at all here as we move that around. That's how the starch tool works. And just so you know, when you add the starch tool, it adds a stiffness property group down here with that starch pin right there. And however many starch pins you add, they'll show up down here inside the stiffness property group. So that, folks, is how you use the starch tool to overcome Newton's third law of physics and also how you use the overlap tool to make sure things go in front of or behind other objects.